Alfredo Gomez, the WBC Super Bantamweight Champion. On August 21st of 1981, Wilfredo Gomez took on the late WBC featherweight champion, Salvador Sanchez. After 32 consecutive wins and 13 defenses of his super bantamweight crown, Gomez was declared a two to one favorite. But in the eighth round, after a series of vicious exchanges, Salvador Sanchez shattered Gomez's dream for a second title with a furious barrage of punches. Gomez had lost the Battle of the Little Giants. But Wilfredo retained his Super Bantamweight title, and in March of 1982, he gave Juan Kid Meza a lesson on punching power. It was Gomez's 35th victory all by knockout, and he was on track again as the best puncher pound for pound in the world. On June 11th, Gomez defended his crown on the undercard of Holmes Cooney. The opponent was Mexican Juan Antonio Lopez. Lopez was an 11-year veteran of the ring. After an awkward performance for 10 rounds, the champion finally caught up with Lopez with a devastating right hand. It came at 102 with a 10. Yet another knockout. Lopez was a late substitute for this man, Roberto Rubaldino. And two months later, Gomez was in the ring with another overmatch contender. Gomez repeatedly pinned Rubaldino into the ropes, hammering him mercilessly. Finally, after the punishment became too much, the challenger's corner informed the referee that their battered warrior just couldn't go on. 16 title defenses, all by knockout. And tonight, it's Wilfredo Gomez, Super Bantamweight Champion, Chapter 17. Lupe Pintor is the WBC Bantamweight Champion. He won that title in 1979. On February 22nd of 1981, he stepped into the ring to defend his title for the fifth time against Argentina's Jose Uziga. The fight was dominated by the champion as he won a unanimous 15-round decision. Jose Uziga joined a list of fighters who could not take the title from this Bantamweight champion. Five months later, an eager Jovito Ringifo entered the ring to try and capture the champion's crown. It appeared the champion lacked his usual ferocity and aggressiveness. Ringifo opened dangerous cuts around Pintor's eyes, and it looked for a time as though we might be crowning a new champion. But the champion rallied back, and in the eighth round, he floored Ringifo with a jab. He got up, but the referee said no more, and Lupe Pintor remained the champion. Two champions meeting tonight for something they both hold dear, a world title. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and in the ring behind me, before they leave, I would like to present the NABF Supervisor of Bouts, the Bussy, supervising for the World Boxing Council from L.A., Brad Pye, supervising from WBC, Jose Suleiman, and ladies and gentlemen, Lindsey Williams, the chairman of the Louisiana State Athletic Commission, in the ring. And he really needs no introduction the world over. The world's busiest, greatest boxing promoter, one and only, Don King. start of the Wilfredo Gomez Lupe Pintor fight and this one is no there's no question about it right from round one we expect them to just have that one another right well brother this is one of those uh, rare fights that you nearly make a prediction there will be uh, early knockdowns or even a knockout both guys possess great punching power Gomez we mentioned was beaten earlier he was really handled pretty well by Salvador Sanchez just when it was beginning to look like he was invincible what was it like for you when you lost to Roberto Duran do you have to have a whole different mindset get your head re-geared completely start to think of yourself as a winner again Yes, well, I tell you, very few fighters will admit it. Um, there is that fear, and there you thought, they say, well, what happens if I lose again? That thought has across everyone's mind. And one, there is of, one of the things about that is it, it becomes a little easier for many fighters after losing their first fight to accept defeat. What made them appear so invincible and so tough while they're undefeated is refusing to accept the possibility of defeat. But once you've been there, 
and maybe you find out, well, it isn't that all that terrible. <laughs> what is it like coming up in weight, as Pintor is doing in this division now? Is it easier to do at the, at the lower divisions like this rather than to do it through the welterweight and middleweight divisions? Well, there's only a four-pound difference in weight, and I can't imagine that that means all of that that much. But that remains to be seen. In general, I think it's true that a, a puncher doesn't take his punch with him as he moves up in weight. That is to say, his punch is strongest in his natural division, in his natural division. And as he goes up in weight, the punch doesn't carry as much power. You look at Arthur McCanty, the referee. Is this a case, Ray, do you feel of both fighters are pretty much brawlers. They're going to get in there and try to slug it out. Does anybody, were you in the position of, say, Lupe Pinto or, or Wilfredo Gomez, either one, do you change your style to the other man or do you just dance with Rudd Brungia, so to speak? Well, you can't really set a plan. You become strategic within the ring itself. And uh, like Pinto and Gomez, quite natural. They're both guys are bangers. Pinto goes, comes straight at you. Gomez, I think Gomez is a better technician in the ring than Pinto, although they still like to get in there and bang with each, each other. Pinto is a guy, of course, who was, actually his last outing, he was not too impressive as he beat Jorge Lujan. He won it in 10 rounds. It was not a title fight, and he really was not too impressive. But the fight before that, against Shung Hoon Lee in Los Angeles, he retained his WBC Bantamweight title by knocking him out in the fifth round. Going back to that, you had to go all the way back to February 22nd of 1981 when he beat Jose Uziga in the fight you saw just a couple of moments ago, or at least parts of it. But he had to go 15 rounds. It was not very impressive there. So for Pintor, he has been somewhat on again, off again. I look at Pinter as the kind of fighter who is a truth machine. He brings out the truth in his opponent. And he's going to be there, and if the opponent is really in top shape, really primed mentally and emotionally for the fight, then, then he can be beaten. But if he's not, if, he's, if, if the weight situation has been too much for him or anything else, then Pintor, the truth comes out. Pintor comes into the ring looking all business right now. When we saw Wilfredo Gomez, to be very honest with you, in Las Vegas on the Cooney Holmes undercard, I was underwhelmed by him. I really did not think he fought a very good fight then. Uh, as I say, he, he's a sort of fighter who comes down to his opponent or up to his opponent, so to speak. He doesn't create... His greatness is in, in coming to the, to the opponent that you think is better than him, and suddenly you see that this guy is going to be right there. That's what happened when he fought Zerati and surprised everyone. You saw the record, 49-5-1. Is it easier, Larry Holmes, easy to fight a brawler when you are a brawler yourself? Uh, I don't think so, Barry. I think uh, Gomez can do both. He can be a brawler, he can be a boxer. I've seen him try to box... Uh, uh, Sanchez, but it didn't really work well. Sanchez had too much on the ball for him, but uh, Gomez is a good fighter, and he's going to come out and fight. I'm looking for Gomez to start off right from the bell. Well, again, he's a man with something to prove now, and as Larry Merchant mentioned, he comes up or down to the level of his opponent. He is going to have to be up to handle the likes of Lupe Pintor. Bit of a waiting game going on here as Pintor, the first into the ring, being the challenger. We await the arrival of Wilfredo Gomez into the ring. Kind of a time span here. We've talked about this on numerous occasions, Ray, but it's difficult just to stand around and wait. Well, for a new guy, a guy that gets into the ring is green, inexperienced guy, it's a fact of waiting. Uh, it has a tendency to make your nerves even greater. But these guys here, professionals, they've been, they've been through the mill, so you know what it's all about. Crowd reacting now to the arrival, as you see, of Wilfredo Gomez coming in somewhere inside of that entourage. You will see Wilfredo Gomez. That's the problem with these little guys. You can't see them for the entourage. <laughs> That's right. Entourage outweighing them by about 200 pounds here. As you see, this is his 17th title defense, so he has been around the track more times than once. We've talked about his loss to Salvador Sanchez. That really the only black mark on an otherwise very impressive record. 34-1 and one with 32 knockouts, and you don't hardly get any better than that. <laughs> That's a very impressive record. And, and every one of all of those title defenses, and that's a lot of title defenses, have been won by knockouts. Shaking hands with Don King, the promoter of this fight. He's looking very loose. Lupe Pintor on the other side of the ring, looking all business. And Gomez actually seeming to enjoy himself here. Now he starts to get his game face on. Arthur McCanty, the referee, talking to Wilfredo Gomez. And there is the record of Wilfredo Gomez. A little bit contradictory to what we just told you, but one report that we have says 34-1. and one. This one says 37-1-1 one and one with 37 knockouts. I am not sure that that is right, but we'll go with that anyway. Tail of the tape between these two fighters, not a lot to choose. 
Age comparable, the height is comparable, the weight is right exactly the same, and Pinto, remember, had to come up to reach a couple of inches for Gomez, although really I don't think that reach is that much of a factor amongst the little men. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, and the introductions of the fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. And one of the big feature bouts this evening, 15 rounds of boxing for the World Boxing Council Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. The WBC supervisor in charge at ringside, Brad Pye of Los Angeles, California. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you on my right, wearing white trunks with a blue-yellow trim, the challenger this evening from Wajimalpa and Mexico, weighing in at 121 and a half for the fine record of 38 knockouts in his 49 great wins. Presently, the World Boxing Council...